Hey everyone, Eric Hayden here in the garden. Exciting day, it's April 25th, 2022. The garden's looking pretty good. We still have some dieback on some of the bushes, as I mentioned, gotta prune that out. Gotta do a little weeding here before I go ahead and put down the alfalfa tea. The reason why I'm saying it's an exciting day, not because of any of that, I showed you Randy Scott and Sunny Sundays. They were bare root. They were potted up. I don't really count those as the first blooms in the garden because they had the head start being in a pot. What I do count is this. The first blooms of 2022 in the garden, usually it's this bush. This is Yolande de Aragon. If you want the spelling, I'll zoom into the name tag and I'll try to put the link below. This is the only old garden rose I have. This is uh, an own root rose. I bought it from Palatine in New York, and then my parents bought one from Palatine as well. And then I took a cutting when we moved from New York down here to North Carolina. So this is on its own roots, and I don't know if you can tell, I'm, uh, my shoulders are about five feet tall, and it's as tall as me. This is with a fall pruning and a spring pruning. So this is a prolific bloomer uh, or grower. As far as blooms, not quite as much. I'll get to these pretty ones here in a second. What I mean by that is like a lot of hybrid teas, it'll have a good flush of blooms in the springtime, but then it doesn't do much for the rest of the summer. And if you prune it back a little bit, you'll have a secondary flush late summer into the fall. Because of that, I was not really enamored with this flower in New York. That second round and flush in August into September was just not that much. So I almost got rid of this bush, but my son really likes it. And the reason why he really likes it is the fragrance. It is outstanding. Of course, you can't see the fragrance through this video, so you'll have to take my word for it. Mr. Lincoln, Double Delight, some of my favorite hybrid tea roses that are fragrant doesn't hold a candle to this and it's a really pretty rose again this is a portland old garden rose um, most prolific in the spring really nice flush of blooms i care for or my specialty the ones i like are the hybrid tea the ones with the kind of pointed centers the ones you would get at the floor shop so i'm not a huge fan of the shaping on this but again my son really likes it and the fragrance is outstanding it would be as if I spray perfume right in front of you. That's how strong it is. If you're looking to buy it, I'll try to link below some of the locations that sell it. It's an old garden rose. Um, I'll zoom into the name tag and then with some post editing, I'll try to link to some um, uh, companies that sell it. Uh, Palatine roses in Canada. I know their bare root season is over with now for spring 2022. They'll start back up again in fall 2022. Uh, but other places like Heirloom Roses um, and a few others I don't want to misspeak, so I'll try to post the link below or in the text of this video. You can find this. Very easy to propagate on own root. Obviously, the patent is up, so you can do so if it's an 1843 rose. Uh, it can get some black spot, um, so I do try to spray it. But being that it's been a rose that's been around for a long time, uh, that black spot really doesn't bother it too much. Despite the black spot, these blooms are just so, so pretty. And again, the fragrance is what you would get this for. Not only that, but it's just a really good growing rose. Even with that pruning back that we did in the fall and again the spring, you can see it dwarfs any other roses. Uh, to give it a comparison, Alina on the ARS chart is like an 8688 on a scale out of 10. It's one of the highest growing one of the highest rated growing roses. That's on the right is Alina. On the left is Yolanda de Aragon. So very comparable in, in terms of growth. Um, maybe not as disease resistant as Alina. Alina can get some powdery mildew now and then. It can get black spot, but it's not as prevalent as it would be on Yolande. But you can see two of my better growing roses. The reason why I put these back toward the fence is they um, are expected to be some of the tallest. And with the sun kind of coming up like that, um, I wanted the tallest roses in the back so they didn't shade anything. So there's Alina looking really good and a good comparison to Yolande de Aragon. So that'll be it. Short and sweet video today. Highly recommend this. Um, if you can get a cutting, uh, go ahead and do so. I'll leave you with one last look at Yolande de Aragon. Very pretty rose. 
equally as good as a fragrant one. And I've got my good old trusty little glass bottle. I use these for, to give them to coworkers. In this case, it'll be for the family. And I've got my pruners. So I'll be cutting the first blooms of the year and putting them in a vase to enjoy them. Hope everyone's doing well. It's April, end of April here. Look for a lot more videos on blooms as we get into our peak season, which here in Eastern North Carolina is from about the first week of May through the first week of June. So look for a lot more videos. I appreciate the new subscribers and always comment below. What's your favorite rose? What's your first rose that blooms in your garden? For me, it's Yolande de Aragon. Sometimes a close second is Dublin Bay, which is a climbing rose. But what blooms first for you? Comment below. Love to hear from you. Take care, everyone.